Ever wondered how the Himalayan pink salt on your table is produced? Today we're going on a fascinating journey to uncover the origin of this unique salt that not only adds flavor to your food but also has a rich history and numerous health benefits. Our journey begins in the Kara region of Pakistan, home to the second largest salt mine in the world. These mines are a testament to the Earth's incredible natural processes, having been formed over 800 million years ago. Imagine that, the salt on your table has been in the making since before the dinosaurs roamed the Earth. The discovery of these mines is credited to none other than Alexander the Great. Legend has it that in 326 BC, his horses started licking the rocks in the area. That's one way to stumble upon a gold mine or should we say, a salt mine. But let's get to the heart of the matter. How do we go from these ancient salt rocks to the fine grains of pink salt we know and love? Well, it all starts with the extraction process. Miners and geologists work together to select only the highest quality rocks. This isn't just about picking a pretty rock, it's about ensuring the purity and mineral content of the salt. This careful selection process directly influences the final product's taste, color, and health benefits. It's like choosing the perfect ingredients for a gourmet dish. From these ancient mines an incredible journey begins that transforms these rocks into the pink salt you sprinkle on your food. Stay tuned to join us on this great adventure where we'll explore the transportation, manufacturing, packaging, and distribution processes that bring this ancient salt from the heart of the Himalayas to your table. Remember, every sprinkle of Himalayan pink salt is not just a dash of flavor, but a taste of history, millions of years in the making. So, we've got our salt rocks, now what? Well, it's time for these stalwart stones to embark on a thrilling journey, where they will shed their rough exterior and evolve into the familiar form we all know and love. The first challenge, transportation. These rocks fresh from the Cairo region are not exactly lightweight. So, it takes some serious horsepower to get them from the depths of the mines to the processing plant. And by horsepower, we mean specialized trucks. These trucks are the unsung heroes of the Himalayan salt story, braving rough terrains and long journeys to deliver their precious cargo. In some cases, a train truck system is employed, a sort of relay race for rocks, making the process more time and cost effective. Once the salt rocks arrive at the manufacturing facility, they're in for a bit of a spa treatment. They are stockpiled for selection, where only the finest, most promising rocks are chosen to proceed. Think of it as the rock version of a beauty pageant, only the winners get to be ground into grains. Next, it's bath time. The rocks are washed and dried in an enclosed area equipped with automatic machinery. This isn't just a casual rinse, mind you, it's a thorough cleansing to say goodbye to any foreign matter that might have hitched a ride from the mines. It's all about maintaining the purity of the salt. Finally, the salt rocks are parched in a concealed chamber. This isn't some sort of rock sauna for relaxation. The parching process is crucial in evaporating excess water maintaining an optimal moisture level. This ensures that when these rocks finally become table salt, they are just as nature intended. Pure, mineral-rich, and absolutely delicious. So there you have it. From the depths of the ancient Kera mines to the state-of-the-art processing facilities, our Himalayan salt rocks have embarked on quite the journey. But hold on to your salt shakers, folks. This is just the beginning. Now the real transformation begins. Welcome to the world of salt transformation. Just when you thought these rocks couldn't get any more dazzling, they embark on a remarkable journey of metamorphosis, one that's both a science and an art. Let's dive into this exciting process. First, our salt rocks are treated to a little spa day. But this isn't your average day at the spa, it's a parching process, where the rocks are heated in a concealed chamber. This is not just to give them a nice warm glow, it's all about evaporating excess water, maintaining an optimal moisture level that's just perfect for producing our star of the show, the Himalayan table salt. Next, these pampered rocks are taken to the grinder. And no, this isn't a dating app for rocks. This is where they undergo a transformation from hard rocks into fine grains, ready for culinary use. It's like watching a rugged mountain man turn into a suave, sophisticated gentleman. Now it's time for the grading. This isn't school but high standards still apply. Grading machines classify the grains, ensuring a uniform and high-quality final product. It's like sorting through a crowd at a rock concert, making sure only the best fans get to the front row. Then comes the color sorting. An optical color sorting machine works its magic, eliminating impurities and undesired grains. It's like a bouncer at a VIP party, only letting the most glamorous grains through. This ensures that every batch of Himalayan salt meets the highest standards of purity. And there you have it. 
from rugged rocks to refined grains, it's a journey that's as fascinating as it is meticulous. But this isn't the end of the road, our salt grains still have a few more adventures up their sleeve. But wait, there's more to this process. Now that we have our fine grains of pink salt, it's time to get them ready for your table. Imagine being a grain of Himalayan pink salt. You've been washed, dried, parched, ground, classified, and sorted. Now it's time to get all dolled up for the big show. First, you're sealed in a secure, airtight container that's as protective as a mother bear with her cubs. This isn't any old container, it's specially designed to ward off environmental factors and contaminants, like a superhero shield. This way you stay as fresh as the day you were ground. Now, if you're destined for a wholesale trip, things get a little more industrial. You're not just getting dolled up, you're getting ready for a grand ball. You're packed into sturdy bags made from materials like woven polypropylene. These bags are as tough as they come, able to handle the hustle and bustle of a bulk shipment. It's like being in a five-star hotel room that's built to withstand a hurricane. Once you're all packaged up, it's time to hit the road. Distributors, the unsung heroes of the culinary world, take over. They're like the postal workers of the food industry, come rain or shine, they're out there making sure that the Himalayan salt gets where it needs to go. They ensure that the salt lands in retail stores all over the globe, ready to be picked up by discerning customers who appreciate the unique flavor and health benefits of Himalayan pink salt. It's a journey that takes you from the ancient salt mines of the Kara region, through a rigorous process of transformation, and finally, to the shelves of a retail store. It's a journey that's as remarkable as the salt itself. So, that's how the salt lands on your table. But what about those beautiful salt lamps? Ever marveled at the glow of a Himalayan salt lamp and wondered how it's made? Well, let's dive right into the fascinating process behind these luminous beauties. It all begins with the same Himalayan salt rocks we've been talking about, but instead of heading over to the grinding machines, these rocks are destined for a different kind of transformation. Large rotating blades, not too dissimilar from what you might see in an action movie, are employed to shape these dense salt rocks. Picture a skilled artisan, wielding this powerful tool, slowly carving into the rock. It's an intricate dance, a balance of force and precision, to create the unique shapes we see in salt lamps. Now that we have our rough shape, it's time to refine. This is where those diamond-tipped drill machines come into play. Yes, you heard that right, diamond-tipped. Nothing but the best for our Himalayan salt lamps. These drills with their robust tips can penetrate the dense structure of the salt rocks, hollowing out the center. Once the drilling process is complete, the rocks are handed over to skilled artisans. With a hammer in hand, they refine the size of the rocks, chipping away any excess to reveal the lamp's final form. It's a bit like sculpting, but instead of marble or clay, it's salt. Next comes the polishing. This phase enhances the natural luster of the salt rocks, giving them that signature glow when illuminated. It's like giving the salt lamp a spa day, buffing and polishing until it shines. But what's a lamp without light? That's where the lighting components come in. They're carefully embedded within the hollowed-out center of the salt rock. It's a delicate process, ensuring that the light perfectly complements the natural hues of the salt lamp. Finally, a crucial quality check is conducted before packaging. Each lamp must meet the highest standards of craftsmanship and beauty. After all, we want only the best for your living rooms, bedrooms, and offices. And that, dear viewers, is the journey of Himalayan pink salt from the ancient mines of Pakistan to your kitchen table and living room. 